Okay, so here is an example of a compound turbo project that we've been doing. This is the one where we have all the data logs from. This is a GTW3884, which 67 mil, more or less a TO4Z from back in the day. A little bit newer auto. It feeds into a 2860RS, the original one, not a Gen 2 or GTX or anything. And if you look close, you can see there is a exhaust manifold in there. Down deep in the chasm, there is a gate that transfers from the exhaust manifold around to a feed pipe, which is going to be attached to this. This one comes around and then comes into the flange on the 38. And then obviously we got just a normal downpipe intake box and everything goes through the the intercooler over to the the plasma man intake and just a fairly stock rb26 not too crazy some id 1300s i think it is or 1050s anyway not again not too crazy pump gas and this one did 404 360 24 pounds drop into 22 and we're going to get into the logs a little bit more and go over what we were seeing it has two boost control solenoids hanging out right here one for each of the gates we have that pressure sensor between the turbos and then obviously we have one on the manifold itself so we have a fair amount of instrumentation uh two emap sensors so we know what the pressure in the manifold is and in the crossover pipe uh between the turbos so Let's see what it is. So keeping in mind that I am a, a noob when it comes to count compound turbos, I was kind of surprised to see how some of this data correlates. I know that basically everything is working off airflow. It's cubic feet per minute. So if you use more of one turbo than the other, you're going to see efficiency changes. You're going to have more actual air mass moving into the engine. That's kind of what we're going to talk about. Not so much if these were sized 100% correctly or not, because that's going to be a subject of debate. In the drawing that I have here that you can see, I said 35R. Uh, running the number, it's actually a GTW3884, but there are three different size options, and I didn't pay close enough attention to look and see exactly which one this was because there is a 62, 64, and a 67 mil. So, at any rate, it's a bigger turbine wheel. And I kind of have been saying it was a 67, so I could be incorrect. But when we look at the logs, this is in Haltech uh, Data Log Viewer. This has a, a Elite 2500 on it. You look real close, you can see two separate logs. We're gonna have the dyno sheets for these. First thing that you notice right here, and right here is the boost curves. They peak roughly the same, 20.3 and 20.6. Uh, same 7200 RPM out the top, start roughly the same spot, 2300 RPM. The important things to notice here, we're gonna just grab an arbitrary point here is that the gen out generic output three is 37 and a half percent on the bottom one 35 percent on the big one i do have it incorrectly labeled here this is actually for controlling the 2860 the small turbo uh just gonna have to go with me on that one but you can see right away that two and a half percent 11.4 psi here 6.3 here the engine starts to accelerate because ultimately torque or horsepower is the, well, horsepower specifically, is the engine's ability to gain RPM per second. So if we make more, it's going to accelerate faster. So even though we started at roughly the same point in RPM, the run is going to be shorter just because we're making more torque sooner. And you can kind of see that as, as we go through the rev range here. We get, like, we'll say halfway. The... More powerful pull is 5280. We're only 4500 here. And that's time.
that's really what we're we're working with. Boost is roughly equivalent, 19.9 pounds, 20.2. The car didn't have an easy spot to get a boost source on the dyno, so we just have air fuel when we switch to that. But as you can see, 2.5% seem to add up to a lot. So what does it look like in practice? How about at 3,800 RPM, we're up 67 pound-feet of torque. Look at how this filled in. Just adding 2.5% more duty cycle to use more of the, the small turbo. And I'm not going to use correct terms either just because I like saying small turbo and big turbo. Keeps it easier for me to keep track of. But it carried that through the entire power band. And then out the top, obviously, it makes better power because we're, we're ultimately moving more air. Um, it is a little leaner, roughly the same. And then we get up here, we have a little bit of variation, but not, not terrible. Not enough to really explain where the 21 horsepower went, just the fact that we have more actual airflow going into the engine at the same boost level. That's 6686, so we will find a, an approximate spot there. The top one, let's see, where are we? 68, 19.6, and then the lower one, 19.5. So very, very close on boost, just more actual air mass going into the engine. Okay, great. So now let's fast forward. We're going to go to some more specific data showing kind of the back pressure and why this particular turbo kit could have been engineered differently, more like how the diesel guys do it, and I think it would have uh, made the same amount of boost, same RPM range, but made more power. So let's go to that next. We're going to stop there because otherwise this would have ended up being like 20 minutes long, and we'll have episode two of Introduction to Compound Turbos. Let's learn what we don't know uh, in a couple days. If this is content that you like and you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Uh, hit the thumbs up button if it is something you like. If it's something that you have a friend that will maybe appreciate the tech, the car, whatever content we have that you think they might enjoy as well, please consider sharing that with them. And if you want notified as new content is added, just hit the bell icon and it will automatically do that. YouTube's pretty cool. Okay guys, take care.